These are the largest reforms to our social service system since the introduction of Medicare, and it is essential that we do it right the first time. In aged care, funding cuts are putting pressure on budgets and workloads, and delays waiting for assessments and care packages have meant that people have not been able to stay in their own home, and in some instances have even died while waiting for appropriate care. I want to share a story about an NDIS participant. She is a mum to three kids, she requested a face-to-face -face assessment and was denied. She has burns to 40% of her body and is wearing a full burn suit. And if she had the conversation in person with the assessor would have seen this. Let me tell you a story about a 49-year-old Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander man who is a member of the stolen generation and a victim of child abuse. In 2014, Jack had cancer in his arm and as a result has limited use of this arm and chronic pain. He also has significant neurocognitive disability and psychosocial disability. I find it shocking to report to you tonight that Jack's NDI application was rejected. Jack represents one of hundreds of marginalised people who have been repeatedly failed by human services and are at risk of being left behind again. I was at the, I was at the stage where I was cutting up. Well, I didn't want to cut up anymore. Jules' ongoing mental health challenges, raising a child with a mental health issue of her own and a son with an acquired brain injury, none of Jules' family are registered for the NDIS. While the NDIS may work well for some, for families like Jules, they're just falling through the cracks. Together we have heard endless stories about people over our 26 member organisations being exploited at work, struggling to find work, or facing poor quality training that doesn't lead to any work. I got through 80% of the course, then they stopped contacting me and suddenly shut down and disappeared. Basically, that means I wasted more than a year full-time study, I lost my job, and I'm left with over $19,000 debt. Please help me fix this and stop it from happening again. These stories about not getting my pay slips, working 12 hours and only getting paid for three. The worst part was when I worked in a hotel and my boss stole $10,000 from me and my five colleagues because he didn't pay us. My wife's relative, Vaka, was a seasonal farm worker in Childers. He was in hospital here in Brisbane. I was in total shock when I was told that he had been sick for eight days before anyone took him to the doctor. He was in an induced coma. Vaca came on a government approved placement and 10 seasonal workers have died in the past five years. We have to stop the mistreatment and exploitation of vulnerable seasonal workers. Many of the stories we have heard are about situations where rights do exist. Rights exist, regulations exist, but the outcomes for Sergio, Kenny and many others still have not improved. Our proposal is for the state government to increase the numbers of inspectors actively documenting any exploitation so that that can be reported to the Fair Work Ombudsman. We are asking the Queensland Government to partner with our alliance to ensure training remains an important pathway for sustainable employment. You've heard these powerful stories tonight. Will your government improve the quality and the delivery of care for the elderly, for people with disabilities and those living with mental illnesses? Will your government ensure continued funding for quality training that provides real skills and leads to good jobs? Will you work with us to implement solutions to expose and investigate exploitation of the most vulnerable and disadvantaged workers in Queensland? Through no fault of their own people, sometimes are vulnerable in our society and they fall through the cracks. And it is government's duty to deliver the services for people, to help them in those times, to get back on their feet. And that is my commitment. Just to summarise, Premier, what I heard was that's a yes to recognition. Yes. A yes to our care asks, a yes to employment, and a yes to meeting with us. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. We wrote to the opposition leader, Mr Nichols, and invited him 
uh, to come tonight. In July, he said he had a prior commitment in Northern Queensland. We provided him with the same asks that we just put to the Premier. He has not provided a video or a representative tonight. We are still negotiating for a commitment for a meeting with the opposition leader. Through listening to the stories of our community, we have earned the right to demand all sides of politics recognise us. Are we committed to this alliance being non-partisan? Yes! Are we committed to people power? Our power as an organised civil society comes from our ability to take action and the promises we make to each other. So now I call on you to commit to action. If you are going to sign up to be a part of the campaign, please wave your card in the air.